Hello and welcome to the Unit 7 Craft Lecture, Revision Strategies. In this class, the instructor will provide you with specific feedback regarding specific revisions that you should consider making to your essay. Advanced writers are always eager to take editorial suggestions from teachers, readers, publishers, and from wherever else they can get it. At the same time, writers also need to internalize strategies for reviewing their own writing in order to take full advantage of the opportunity the revision process provides to strive for excellence in their writing. Revising your own writing can be very difficult, which is why even professional writers rely on teams of peer reviewers, editors, and proofreaders to catch mistakes and make recommendations. Writers are often completely blind to their own errors, a trick of perception that is similar to those kinds of visual puzzles where one line looks longer than the other even though they are both the same length. The eye often sees what it expects to see, rather than what is actually there. This is literally true when it comes to concrete errors. It is not uncommon for a writer to say something like, I read the essay through seven times and never noticed that there is no period on the end of that sentence until someone pointed it out. It's not like I don't know that periods go at the end of sentences. It's just that I thought it was there, so I literally did not see it. If this is true for simple periods, how much harder is it for writers to assess their own work in terms of much more subjective qualities, such as word choice and relevance? At the same time, the writer is the only person who knows what a particular piece of writing is trying to do, so the writer is the only person finally capable of assessing its effectiveness and accuracy. The best way of transcending this contradiction is to try to put some psychological distance between yourself and the piece of writing. Try to trick yourself into thinking that you are not the author of the essay, that you are picking it up for the first time out of thin air and looking at it like a stranger. When writers have the luxury of time, they usually find it helpful to take a break of a week or two between the drafting and revising process as a way of achieving this fresh perspective. If you don't have this opportunity, maybe you can try to look at your paper as if you haven't looked at it for a week or two. It is one of the unique properties of writing that it allows for this double perspective. You can be inside it and outside it at the same time, and advanced writers practice flipping their perspective so that they can learn to see their own writing from a third-person point of view. Through the goggles of stranger vision, you are not as invested in the fine details of the essay. You can look at your essay as a stranger would, or as you would look at an essay written by a stranger. Revising for format. The first thing a stranger tends to notice about an unfamiliar essay is its initial appearance. How does the cover page look? How long is it? How is the header formatted? How many citations are listed on the references page? And how is the page formatted? For readers familiar with APA style, they will immediately recognize the familiar markers of this popular format and this recognition will establish their first cognitive link with the new essay. Recognizing the familiar features of a standardized format also allows a reader to feel at home in a new essay, creating the affinity that will provide a foundation for future engagement with the essay. Deviations from the formatting guidelines associated with APA will be perceived immediately as violations of this code. These kinds of deviations are easy to notice, and so a helpful first step for a writer revising an essay in a standard academic format is to run through a quick checklist to evaluate the cover page, the header, the in-text citations, and the end text citations to make sure that they are compliant with the target model. In short, your essay should look just like any sample APA paper that you find on the internet. If it doesn't, the relevant corrections are easy to put into effect. Proofreading. After perusing the format, a first-time reader of an essay is likely to start reading through the text. Before they begin to get a sense of what the essay is about, however, their first impressions will be in response to the writer's language. The first-time reader will quickly tune in to the tone in which the essay is written, and if the essay contains technical errors, such as misspellings, ungrammatical sentences, or misplaced punctuation, the reader will tune into these defects in a way that may actually preempt understanding of what the essay is actually saying. Before readers understand what writers say, they listen to how they speak. When a reader notices a grammatical error, they tend to look for more, so instead of reading for content, they may become increasingly distracted by the unrelated game of hunting for mistakes. Technical mistakes in writing can interfere with a reader's ability to understand what the writer is saying, not only because the mistakes themselves create confusion, but also because they pull readers out of the flow of what the sentences are saying by drawing their attention to what the sentences look like. 
Of course, in an academic or professional context, such mistakes also detract from the illusion of control and omniscience that effective writers attempt to convey. The good news is that these errors can be eliminated with the use of a rigorous proofreading process. In addition to utilizing your own stranger vision to detect technical errors in your writing, your instructor will give you specific editorial feedback, and some writers also find it helpful to enlist a proofreading buddy, someone you know and trust who can act as a second or third pair of eyeballs in your attempt to search out and correct technical errors. Revising for structure. As a reader becomes more familiar with the style and content of your essay, they will become aware of the structural components of your essay. In assessing the effectiveness of this structure, they will likely compare it to the standard structural elements that they are familiar with from other pieces of academic and professional writing. A checklist of such structural features can be easily assembled based on the structural principles discussed in the Unit 6 Craft Lecture. Does the first paragraph introduce the essay's main topic and present a clear thesis statement? Does the final paragraph reflect on the overall discussion and conclude with a sense of closure? Do the body paragraphs have topic sentences? Do the body paragraphs end with closing remarks that sum up the paragraph's main points? Are quotations and other pieces of information from sources effectively introduced and explicated? Are the paragraphs proportional to one another? Are there any paragraphs that are significantly longer or shorter than the others? Is there an evident logic that connects each paragraph to the next one? Thinking about the structure of your own essay in terms of these questions provides an opportunity for you to step back and think objectively about how a first-time reader of your essay would answer these questions. If you find that you cannot answer any of these questions with a full-throated yes, the process of remedying any of these structural issues is relatively straightforward. Revising for content. In academic and professional writing, there is one more or less objective criterion that can be used to measure the effectiveness of any given sentence in a piece of writing. Is it relevant to the thesis? The thesis statement is the true North Star of an essay. Once your stranger readers understand what the thesis of your essay is, they will begin to think about everything in your essay, every paragraph, every sentence, every quote, every piece of information, through the lens of the thesis, judging each element in terms of its relation to the essay's self-identified main point. In the process of drafting, writers often find themselves getting pushed and pulled into different wormholes and subthreads. As discussed in last week's lecture, this kind of wandering is a crucial part of the drafting process. The revision process, however, demands the steady nerves and dispassionate gaze of a surgeon. Writers, especially advanced writers, often become enamored of their own words and sentences. It can be very difficult for them to acknowledge the necessity of cutting out a paragraph or a sentence that they have put their heart and soul into writing. Nevertheless, when writers put on an editing cap and start looking at a piece of writing through stranger vision, they need to be willing to slice out parts of an essay that stray away from the course established by the thesis statement. Likewise, the revision process requires that writers be honest about the pieces that may be missing from their draft, aspects of a discussion that the writer may have overlooked or ignored, but which, from an objective point of view, should be included. A patient revision process is likely to involve both elements, the slicing out and the grafting on, all with the purpose of enhancing the essay's ability to follow through on the promise articulated by its thesis statement. Some writers become so addicted to the process of revision that they continue to prune and fine-tune essays for years. Indeed, it is the kind of open-ended process that can go on indefinitely, with successive revisions bringing out different aspects of your discussion. As an advanced writer, developing a robust revision process can enhance your ability to use your writing to influence people, impact society, and change the world.